one opossum eats 5,000 ticks every season, and that reduces Lyme disease. So if we're saving one, we're actually saving, you know, 30, 40, or 60. And depending on the area, ticks are he heavy in that area. We're saving people too. My name is April Hoffman. I'm the founder and CEO of Wild Souls Wildlife Rescue and Rehabilitation. Um, we are a nonprofit 501c3, and we're actually one of four in the state that does on call rescues as a nonprofit. I found two baby squirrels, and I didn't realize that at the time it was illegal to help injured wildlife. So I just thought there has to be something more. So I flew around the country, got the required education. I did a year apprenticeship at a local nature center and established Wild Souls. When I found the baby squirrels, it was crying and I tried to reunite it with mom. The reunite did not work. And at the time I'd have to drive four hours to a local nature center. So um, I did take the squirrels in and released them back into the wild. And in the process, got the education and the licenses required. It was a long process. It took about two years. Wild Soul sits at a 98% release rate. So our goal is always to get them back into the wild. Every story that we have, it's a learning experience. I say it's either a lesson or a blessing. They're better off than where they were, you know. Um, not all animals need rescue. Cause some, unfortunately, they're dinner for another animal. So it's a fine line of always deciding what to rehabilitate if it's a good candidate. That's called wildlife kidnapping. Um, it's important to spread education of know when certain animals feed. Like some don't want to draw predators to their young, so they leave all day and only feed in the morning and um, in the, at dusk. And humans, we want to help, and we'll just grab them and take them to a local nature center. And when I set up Wild Souls, I don't want to ever be that. We Our goal is to reunite, reunest before they get to the center. And because wildlife, belongs with the wildlife moms. It drives me crazy actually. In the spring people will be like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, no, put it back. <laughs> we need more education. We need more awareness in wildlife rehabilitation for the need. It's a great opportunity for hands-on experience for veterinarians. Um, these animals, when they come in as babies, they have to be fed every two and a half hours uh, throughout 24 hours up until six to seven weeks at times. So you, when we take them out of their habitats, they're normally in a nest or a den with their mother nursing, and we have to improvise with that and specialized formula. And it's a lot. Their body temperatures drop too low. It puts them in shock and they can die. Or, or if their body temperature isn't regulated, feeding it will kill them as well. It would be like giving a newborn baby a cheeseburger. Our permit, um, our license, we're only allowed 120 days to rehabilitate all our wildlife. So we either release them or we have to, you know, the other option is not good. Those are the hardest ones to rehabilitate because they trust humans and not all humans are good. So say a pet squirrel jumps on someone's shoulder out, out to the neighborhood, they're going to freak out just like a raccoon and probably kill that animal just out of reaction. And we have to detach, you know, barely touch them at all, just to get them ready and they're the hardest. Uh, evicting humane evictions. If you have a nest of raccoons in your attic, play loud music, make vibrations, they'll leave. Uh, the big thing we came across in spring is people would trap their mom and then days later find babies. And then that would be six babies we were rehabilitating for 120 days. And mom never had a chance to be with her kids because she's out in a unknown habitat. So every wild animal has a purpose.